This video is sponsored by Aura. There once was a website called Tumblr. Tumblr was a social media website that absolutely exploded in popularity in the early 2010s. It became a hub for a bunch of communities and cultures to come together and share their love for all types of things. Very quickly, Tumblr became its very own aesthetic. It's hard to explain, but when you spotted something and labeled it as Tumblr, pretty much everyone knew what you were talking about. There is a lot of medium fandoms out there that have their roots in being very Tumblr-ish, and when you know, you know. Tumblr was a juggernaut in the early 2010s, so much so that at one point, a few people decided it was time to go big, and they decided to make their own unofficial Tumblr convention, and it was called DashCon. Too long didn't read, it was a disaster. Yeah, you've probably heard the story a dozen times by now, there's a many a documentary on it, and there's nothing I can add. DashCon is probably the de facto example of a con gone wrong. Cancelled events, low attendance, people nearly getting kicked out the venue, the ball pit, you've heard it all. It was a huge stain on Tumblr's public reception, and it'll never remove that stain. It will forever be remembered as one of, if not, the worst convention of all time. Every other bad con will be held to the standard of DashCon. So, why am I bringing it up today? Well, that will be because its 10th year anniversary is upon us. DashCon is 10 years old. A decade has passed. All those years of ball pit memes is now a footnote in 2010's internet culture. You're 10 years older now. The wall is coming for us all. Due to the 10th year anniversary, I've decided I need to cash in. DashCon wasn't the only catastrophic convention. There are plenty of others out there, and I've decided we're going to talk about those. Everything but DashCon is on the table, because well, what can I really add to the DashCon conversation? There's a slew of fandoms and cultures I can look at for this, so why don't you all sit down and tune in? We're gonna have a gay old time. Welcome to... But first, Daddy Mush needs his paper. This video is sponsored by Aura. Unlike all these conventions giving off negative auras, Aura is here to give you nothing but good vibes. <laughs> yeah, that zinger, I don't know. In the age of the internet, it is now easier than ever for anyone to get a hold of your personal data. Even if you never share a smidge of your personal life online, data leaks and breaches for websites and services you sign up for happen all the time, and they can get out just like that. Now, if someone knows how, they can find you easy. There is a reason why you get so many spam emails and get calls from mysterious numbers. They've gotten a hold of your info. And what do these companies like Ticketmaster do about it? Nothing. They just let it happen. And what you need to mitigate something like this is Aura. Aura can notify you if your data is leaked, and it can protect you if anyone attempts to get a hold of your data. Not only that, but it has a host of different features. It's a VPN. It's an antivirus. It's a password manager. It's an all-in-one app, and for an affordable price. Aura is on all the time, and it can help you, and many others, keep your data safe in this internet-dependent era. You can go to Aura.com slash Magic Mush and try for yourself for two weeks for completely free, and also link below in the description. Go try it yourself and see if any of your data is out there. Aura can protect mine and your data, but it can't protect me from my duty. So let's get back to the video. Yes, yes, you all probably know about Friendship is Magic by now. It was a monstrously popular show in the early 2010s. It became a phenomenon with a huge fan base of more than just little girls. I don't think I need to tell you much else. Friendship is Magic was a huge internet culture juggernaut in the early 2010s. Like, you could not escape pony shit no matter how hard you tried. Somewhere, someone out there, on any website, would have a pony as their avatar, or post a meme involving ponies. I am not joking when I say it was literally impossible to avoid this show. My personal first exposure to it was one day, I randomly got a video on my suggested videos about saving derpy hooves, and I was like, who the fuck is derpy hooves? I had no idea what world I was stepping into looking at that video. But this show's popularity was now great news for people who like money. Now they can sell these toys to not only little girls, but also grown adults too, who will now buy them and then stick them in jars for nefarious purposes. There were also a number of conventions made, like BronyCon, which was by far the most popular one, and it was only a matter of time before some schmuck came along and tried to tap into the new market. And thus, Las Pegasus Unicon was born, held in February of 2013 in Las Vegas, so it actually predates DashCon. 
But people don't really talk about the disaster of this con nearly as much, probably because it would only appeal to Bronies and Friendships as Magic fans, which I am neither of, but hey, it still makes for a funny story. Las Pegasus Unicon was hosted inside the Hotel Riviera, a very old and very well-known hotel in Vegas, which was on its deathbed around 2013, so no doubt Unicon probably got a good deal to host their con there. It was set to be a huge convention. Over 2,000 people were expected to attend, writers and directors from the show, the voice actors were expected to show up, e-celebs, artists, vendors, everything you could ever want from a My Little Pony convention. You could even have dinner with all the special guests. There was a ton of hype and advertising about this con. Hey there, cats and kittens, listen up. February 22nd, 23rd, and 24th, Ever Network's gonna have live coverage of Los Pegasus Unicon. Hosted by that moop Joe Stevens, and meet your very own Big Papa Moose of the Equestrian Inquirer. And when we look at their website, even on the front page, it says, Chaos will be landing. Well, they were right about that. So you sign up for the convention, sign up for the celebrity dinner like the simp you are, and you fly over to Las Vegas. Grab your lemonade badge that took way too long to make. You walk in the hotel and... Already the vibes are off. It's mysteriously empty for a convention that was supposed to have 2,000 people. And from that point forward, everything starts to fall into place to make for one hell of a disastrous convention. There is a distinct lack of staff or anyone that looks like they know what's going on. Picking up one of the brochures, made out of the cheapest paper humanly possible, you can see all the different events that were going to go on here, and there was some controversy involving said pamphlets, because a lot of bronies paid good money to advertise their stuff in these pamphlets, and these adverts only showed up on the pamphlets for the people who showed up day one. And there were hardly any more produced. The only people who had this are um, the people who came in the first day and were lucky enough to get it. This is for the people who have paid good money, really good money, um, to advertise in a convention that flopped. It's the little things that start to build up, but it gets worse from here. The vendors are expecting a way bigger turnaround than what actually showed up, so a good chunk of them are taking a loss on actually coming here, especially when they're not getting paid actual money, but instead, Monopoly bucks with ponies called bits, instead of actual cash. Listen, the, uh, the whole pony crap isn't cute anymore when you start taking my money or replacing it with this crap. They're about as useful as Twitch bits. Many of the celebrities and special guests were left stranded at the airport, and it took forever for anyone to actually come pick them up. Tensions were already rising, and then by the very next day of the con, all hell starts to break loose. The next day got you more panels in a concert, a voice actor panel happened, but during said voice actor panel, a fire alarm was pulled, but there was no fire actually happening. It's been speculated it was either a prank, or a staff member accidentally going out of fire exit. There was also that greatly coveted dinner with all the special guests, with your choice of three dinners, and they gave Tara Strong, y y you know, the main actress of the show, the dish with eggplant on it, and she's allergic to eggplant. Luckily, she was able to catch it before he actually ate it. Imagine nearly killing the main character's voice actress at the convention made to celebrate the show, and by extension, her performance. If you thought that was bad, convention goers later found out something massive. It was found out that the convention was not actually holding off their end of the bargain and wasn't paying the hotel or the special guests or for the special guest hotel rooms or anything. They paid none of that. So the hotel, on the cusp of bankruptcy and flailing around like a beast close to death, starts charging the attendees upwards of a thousand bucks. And I don't think most of them have that lying around. The little bit of money they had made at the convention, they... Oh wait, that's right, they didn't make any actual money. They have Monopoly money that is completely useless and the staff who were supposed to give them real money were gone. You have hundreds of bronies and celebrities potentially now stuck in Las Vegas and are now being charged with something they never knew they were going to be charged for. With the budget of a tuna fish sandwich, the con had no money, the fans had no money, and a desperate plea to get more, the fans and the special guests started a campaign to raise money to pay for everyone's trip back home. Hashtag Lost Peg Assist went live, and with enough of a push online, they were able to get enough money raised to pay off all the expenses needed. Hmm, now where have I heard this story before? By day three, everything was in shambles. Everyone in the convention was basically forced out the building and to take everything they owned as fast as possible or else it becomes hotel property. Even with its dying breath, the house always wins. The convention was a complete and utter bust but everything was able to work out in the end. But after this, rumors and theories start flying about how did everything turn out like this? The more forgiving people have said it was just a poorly managed convention, but the more skeptical have dug deep into it and accused it of being a flat out scam made to just bank on a vastly grown community. And there is a lot to back this up with. It mostly comes down to the creators of the convention who during the midst of it falling apart, fled the scene. They were nowhere to be found when everybody got kicked out. 
Nobody knows exactly when they left, but they did run away from their responsibility. Many believe that they were the ones to pull the fire alarm so they could flee in the commotion, or even that they were the ones to have given Tara Strong the implant she was allergic to, purposely poisoning the main character's actress, which would cause enough of a scene for them to sneak away with the cash, but, but that one's a little far-fetched. What we do know is that they told the hotel to start charging the guests for their own room so they would avoid the responsibility. Their last trace online was posting a half-assed apology on the website. We're sorry. And after that, nobody knows. People have also dug into the couple's past and found out they have a history of using multiple names and doing shady and illegal business practices. Everything seems to point to this convention just being a huge scam. Even months after the fact, all the special guests had not been paid for their work going to the con. It actually scared a lot of them from ever going to a burning convention ever again. It was that bad. But as the years rolled on, the fandom grew bigger and bigger. More conventions for bronies would come and go. A lot were significantly better than this. It's now just seen as a travesty and probably the worst thing to happen to the friendship is magic fandom. Well, until the show got canceled. I don't mean to toot my own horn, but I am sometimes shocked the reach I have as a content creator. In, in reality, I'm just some guy who works on videos in his bedroom with nothing else going on. But hey, I'm glad some people get enjoyment out of me. They'll erect a statue in honor of me, a monument to symbolize my bravery. That being said, no matter how big and popular I might get, it would never cross my mind to try making convention. I don't care if I get 10 million subs overnight. I don't even want to think about how that would turn out. Imagine the smell. <laughs> but when you get any sort of fame online, there comes the inevitability of an ego, and that could lead to cases like Tanacon. Tanacon was a convention held by the popular YouTuber e-celeb, Tanamojo. And well, my opinion on her is, well, come on. Do, do I look like the target audience for Tanamojo? I've never watched her, nor do I plan to. The only thing I've ever watched from her was that content cop on her. But everything I've seen from her, she looks like she has the typical influencer lifestyle. And her content is just that. Seeing someone pretty rich and famous do pretty rich and famous things. It's about what you would expect. Despite it not being for me, she's still incredibly popular, far more popular than I'll ever be, so I feel no shame in ripping into her failures. Being as famous as she is, Tenno would make appearances at VidCon. Tenno was, of course, very popular and one of the star attractions at VidCon, but as time went on, she hated constantly being treated like trash by the runners and staff until 2018, when she had had enough. She released a video shortly before VidCon that year, expressing her discontent with VidCon and wasn't going to put up with it anymore. And to the excitement of her fans, she was going to make her own VidCon. With hookers and hookers. I think all of the rebelled people and all of the unwanted people should host a little meet and greet in Anaheim, California on the same days as VidCon. I'd love to do it because I would love to make this shit bigger, better, and freer <laughs> than VidCon. And I want to let you know, as the CEO of my new meet and greet that I'm having this June, I care about you and I'm excited to fucking meet you. So yeah. Pentagon was going to have all your favorite East celebs and influencers, with the main star of the show being Will. I, 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 I can't, can't quite put my finger on it. But all of your favorites were showing up, including Shane Dawson. Don't be alarmed. I've already taken the precautions of hiding all my cats. Now, just because you're rich and famous doesn't mean that you know how to run your very own convention. It's a lot harder than you would think. It's not just you pay to be in a big place and all your adoring fans show up and give you admiration and an ego boost. There is a lot of playing to be had to make it worthwhile, especially since this is supposed to be a substitute for VidCon. But they were at least smart enough to start small. They chose the Marriott Hotel as a location for the con, and this is where the problems arise. The Marriott in question is estimated to be able to hold only about a thousand people, but Tana claims it held a little over 3,000. Whether that's true or not, I have no idea. And for someone of Tana's size and a bunch of other celebrities, that is ridiculously small. Already, there are red flags showing up. When the actual first day of the convention rolled around, it was definitely way more than a thousand people. There has never been a conclusive answer, but it's been estimated that between four to 15,000 people showed up at this con. And unless they're gonna start doing Dragon Ball Fusion dances, ain't no way they're all fitting in the Marriott. This was the Achilles heel of the event. 
people came to the convention to attend the convention, and there was no way they were all fitting inside the hotel. Attendees would quickly get in line and start moving into the hotel, but after the initial few thousand filled in, the line and the people waiting outside came to a complete stop, and they stood in line for hours, hoping to get in, eventually. Oh, uh, uh, did, did I forget to mention this convention took place in late June, on a hot summer day, in Anaheim? You got thousands of people outside the convention in the summer heat, getting sunburned, and nobody is offering food or water outside either, so some people are even passing out due to the heat. All this waiting in a line that will never move. The people on the inside were packed in like sardines. It's hard to move anywhere or do anything. Allowing any more people in here would make things even worse. From all the footage, it didn't look like it was fun waiting for the convention or even being in the convention. And if you left, you basically couldn't get back in because then someone in the thousand people Congo line outside would take your spot. They're saying that if you leave the building right now for any reason, whether you call someone to do whatever, it's all the way around. But because of how busy it is, you may not get back in. Is this where the line starts? People on the inside were crowded and starving. People on the outside were scorched and thirsty. Tensions just got higher and higher as the day got hotter and hotter. And eventually, after being outside for several hours, the people in the line started to riot. It didn't look good for anyone running the event, and after a while, they finally decided it was best to just shut the whole thing down. And this just made people even more upset. Today, it has been canceled completely. I apologize. Tomorrow, <laughs> you can email Beats and talk about that. I apologize. I Okay. Everyone was told to get out and to go back home. After everything was said and done, the convention was done for. All the future events were canceled and everyone went back home. Uh, so TanaCon day one completed. Um, let's see if we can get to day two tomorrow. It didn't even last a full day. The fallout with TanaCon was pretty bad. A ton of people came out with their side of it. Tana would make an apology for the event. I am not placing blame on anyone other than myself. I take full blame. So I want to tell you if you're watching this, if in any way I let you down, I'm sorry. We're sorry. Shane Dawson, the cat lover, made a little documentary on it to get a ton of people's inside opinions who were a part of it. And you can see just how distraught Tana is about the whole thing. It seems Tana has left the failure of TanaCon behind as she ran right back into the arms of VidCon. So yeah, VidCon and I are friends again. <laughs> We're going to VidCon! We're going to VidCon! Now all TanaCon is, is a footnote in an East Lips past that can only be looked back on in embarrassment. And for other YouTubers to get content out of, cha-ching! Moral of the story is, don't try to topple a titan with no planning, and also, please keep your egos in check. All these convention disasters have happened quite a while ago, and they're all events one can take notes from to make sure they don't make the same mistakes. Well, apparently, those weren't enough because disastrous conventions are still happening to this day, as this next one I'm about to talk about happened just last month, so a very recent case indeed. This next one is a fan convention for Pokemon fans. Oh boy, more Pokemon fandom stuff, just what I needed after laugh time. And it was a convention hosted in the Philippines called Pokeverse, and everything you'll see in this segment have all been pictures taken by this kind woman on Twitter who was nice enough to let me use her pictures in this video, so by all means please go check out her Twitter and see these pics and her other work for yourself. What she was able to capture on camera in the Pokeverse was... <laughs> Dashcon Pokemon Edition. Like, holy crap. The parallels and the entire design and look of the convention are borderline uncanny. You could Photoshop the ball pit in this place and it would look like an old Dashcon photo. But am I here to rack on the emptiness of the convention and the obvious Dashcon look of the place? Yes. But there are other issues which are highlighted in this Twitter thread about this, which I will do my very best to cover. This is still a semi-recent convention, so everything regarding it still isn't known yet, but there's still plenty to cover. The entire event was advertised for kids and adults. You could come here and sell your merch, learn how to draw, and meet the OG voice actors of the show, who flew all the way to the Philippines to come to this convention. 
There were a ton of events planned, a bunch of different places to visit, and to advertise the event, they used these AR cards, which turned out to be traced artwork, and had this animation with a Pokemon trainer on them, which happened to use an already existing animation just plastered on it. This, uh, this already ain't looking too good. So as shown earlier, the entire convention is pretty barren. There are places for collectors to show off their expensive Pokemon collections, then there's the Starter Wall, where it's supposed to represent the first three Pokemon you could pick in the series, and it's represented by three plushies on pedestals, and that's it. Nothing else is here. That's like a running theme of this convention. There is one thing of interest in an open room, and nothing else. There's this area with a bunch of paintings as a point of interest, but they're like five miles away where the people would be at. You, 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 you couldn't just push the tables a little closer to the wall. There's this so-called rest area, which is like three beanbags and a table. I wonder if they decide who gets the beanbags of Pokemon battles. This is one of those conventions where you can definitely tell they did not plan it very well at all. A number of the supposed events never actually happened. There was this supposed baking event, which apparently just turned out to be an advertisement for a kick and drink service. There was also supposed to be this live sketching event, which just turned out to be some guys taking commissions. There wasn't even a place for cosplayers to change costumes, so they just started changing in the rest area in broad public. If you were an indie artist, it was reportedly quite a pretty pain to even get here. It was said to be several thousand pesos, and when converted to US money, it was upwards of almost $400. Which, if you ask me, that sounds like that was the entire budget for the convention. There was one main attraction of the convention, though. They actually had their very own cryptid walking about. Dubbed Ravioli Man, who would walk around, eating ravioli out of a jar, and smearing it all over himself. Now this, this I would pay money to see in person. However, it seems like Ravioli Man wasn't actually meant to be there. He eventually got kicked out after he apparently used a sponge to start smearing ravioli sauce and everything. Really, there was probably just a whole heap of mismanagement that went on here. The person who also brought this doll to the public also goes into more stuff that's more personal to her, being an artist and a singer. And I really don't want to steal all of her thunder, so please, if you want more, I implore you to go check out the original Twitter thread and how much this being a total mess mattered to her. She, however, did make it clear she wanted me to cover one very specific part of this, and as a man of my word, I will. And it's pretty bad. Near the end of the convention, they hold this contest and have a bunch of actors, singers, and people perform on stage. And it went well, for the most part. Now, something that I've neglected to mention is that this convention was also partnered with the Make-A-Wish Foundation, and in doing so, they allowed some of the kids under Make-A-Wish to attend this convention. But that's not the bad part. The bad part is, the convention staff got the bright idea to bring these kids on stage and pose for the camera. These terminally ill kids who are sick, weak, and probably can't get around well, and have had their immune systems compromised, they just show them off to the crowd. Wow. What made them think this was a good idea? There's even pics of them taking some of these kids' face masks off so they could be easier to understand. My god, that's an awful idea! Lord knows what could be floating around that convention center, the same convention center that just had a man spreading ravioli sauce everywhere. Taking off their masks is the last thing you want to do. What a way to cap off a bad convention. Pokeverse was just our all around not very good. Pokeverse would later apologize to the woman who made this all public, promising to do better and make amends. We're sorry. It hasn't gotten as much coverage as it should because, well, it happened in the Philippines, and only for Pokemon fans down there, you you couldn't get any more niche and specific. But it just goes to show you, no matter what part of the globe you're on, what language you speak, or what your skin color is, it is always possible to pull a Dashcon. Now if you ask me, they could have fixed this entire convention by getting just an RPG on stage. Sing with me, Rush Ram! Now this last subject of today, I'm sort of betting the rules for this one. We had a convention fall apart by the last day, we had a convention fall apart the first day, and now we have a convention fall apart before it even happened. This convention never actually transpired, and the reason as to why are so strange and shady they still deserve to be talked about. This convention that never happened was all based around Minecraft. Minecraft was at its peak popularity in the early 2010s, like it was THE game of the time. Everyone was playing it. So many YouTuber careers were spawned because of it. And then their YouTube careers died because their entire channel was Minecraft and they couldn't adapt after it was no longer the biggest game on the planet. 
it was ripe time for a convention to happen. And one did. In fact, several did. There were a ton of Minecraft conventions, but then there was also the official Minecraft convention, Minecon, which led to so many noteworthy moments. Um, what's the recommended amount of dedicated WAM I should have to serve? How many of you have autism, and if so, has it helped you in your modding career? Now, don't ever personal speak thing up to at ask once. Them. But you know, Minecon is successful, so we're not talking about Minecon. We're talking about an unofficial Minecraft convention made by someone that attended Minecon, so we're on some from the producers who saw Shrek shit right now. A man named Lou Gasco had attended Minecon in 2013. Lou Gasco wasn't just some random guy. He was a well-known project manager. He has worked on a number of projects for multiple companies. He's wrote a few books on project managing. So this isn't just some random guy wanting to make a quick buck. It's an actual industry expert who's been working on things for well over a decade. Lou had been working on his current project at the time, the greatest science fair ever, which was this non-profit organization to make virtual science fairs to get kids interested in science. But you see, Lou wanted a way to get some funds for this since it was, you know, non-profit. And he went to Minecon for inspiration after he saw his son playing it. Since Minecraft was at its peak around this time, Lou was incredibly impressed by the sheer size of the con and all the kids attending. They were really into it. And seeing as he needed to find someone to get them interested in science, he got an idea. What if he made his own Minecraft convention for people to attend, and he would use those funds from the convention to fund his nonprofit organization? He was simply hopping on that Minecraft gravy train like everyone else was around the time. He then got into contact with some Minecraft YouTubers, and they all decided to create an unofficial Minecraft convention to fund his nonprofit project, Minorama. Minorama was set to be a huge convention that took place in New York City and was planned to have tons of e-celebs and Minecraft YouTubers show up and as the ads took off, the con quickly gained traction online and they started selling out of tickets fast. Thousands of them and it's estimated they racked up about $500,000 in just ticket sales and for a first time con, that is incredible. Things were looking great, but at the same time, the organizers were about to get smacked in the face with reality. $500,000 is a lot of money, but that would not be nearly enough to make the convention how they wanted. New York City is, of course, one of the biggest cities in the United States, and usually how it goes, the bigger the city, the more expensive pretty much everything is, and the same goes for convention planning. They would need well over a million to pull this convention off, and just ticket door sales weren't going to do it. Lou, using the pull he had, he was able to get a ton of sponsors to pitch in and give money to the event, since it was also going towards a good cause. He got almost 20 different sponsors for this event. That combined with the ticket sales was surely enough for the convention. The hype behind the convention was massive, with a ton of Minecraft tubers advertising they were going to be there. And with one week to go, it seems like everything was in place. And then, tragedy struck. Minorama would announce the entire thing had been postponed, just a week before it was set to happen. Why did they postpone the show? Nobody knows. Sorry. Some have said it was due to Mojang hitting them with a season desist, but I've looked online, I can't find any evidence of this. And it was delayed to never. Madarama never actually happened, but that's not what caused chaos. What caused chaos was the fact there were no refunds. $500,000 worth of ticket sales were never going to be given back. This quickly had everyone turn on the event and the organizers, many flat out calling the entire thing a scam. Now the event getting cancelled, of course, upset a lot of people, but many weren't just going to give up that easy. A bunch of big Minecraft players came together and in just a few short days threw enough cash together to hold a smaller con called U-Cube and gave all the people who signed up for Monorama something to do after already making plans to be in New York City. It wasn't as flashy or very high budget at all, but it was something and a lot of people were happy with what they got. Now, as for the Monorama organizers, they were basically just called scammers. The whole Monorama business venture fought for bankruptcy and everyone moved on. Lou himself still has the event on his LinkedIn, so he still takes pride in the fact he nearly made it, and he still takes most of the blame for it to this day. But what happened to the $500,000 they raised? Nobody knows what it was being used for, or if it was even being used for the convention at all. Did it go towards Lou's Science Fair project, which the website is now no longer up in 2024? Nobody knows for certain. But you want to know the craziest thing of all? Minorama was scheduled to happen on July 12th through the 13th, 2014. What other convention was happening during that time? DashCon! 
Yeah, it all wraps back around to Dashcon. In two completely different states, two different convention disasters were happening at the same time. One of them had never happened, and one of them has the reputation of being the worst convention ever. Either you were having the worst time ever at Dashcon, or you were having your money taken by Monorama. What a timeline to live in. Alright boys and girls, it's been a fun day of cringe, but it's about time I log off. All these conventions were a you-had-to-be-there moment in time. Even though the majority of them were disastrous, the vast majority of people will probably still remember them. The sunburns, the emptiness, the ball pit, they will stay in the minds of many for probably the remainder of their lives, just showing you even in failure, you can still win in some way. You shouldn't be scared if a convention goes wrong. Either way, it'll still be entertaining in some way, shape, or form. And then YouTubers like me can make clickbait videos on them to give you a dopamine hit of nostalgia. And who doesn't love that? Who doesn't love me? Maybe they will name a city after me. God bless, like, and subscribe, and good night. Don't worry, my friends. Magic Mush Con will never happen. I'm not gonna embarrass myself like that. Maybe. I think they're ready for this one. Jump in the pit.